Hello and welcome back to this lecture series on non-destructive testing which is being offered under NPTEL online certification course. So, in the last lecture we uh, discussed one of the topics uh, which was on uh, visual optical method and as I told you, you can do few things uh, by using this technique, but it has its own limitation in the sense uh, you would be able to do only certain uh, external inspection, external surface of the component. And if you want to visualize something which is uh, below the surface or which uh, lies underneath, then you need to uh, use one of these NDT methods uh, that we have listed as you could see in the first slide. Okay. So, we have uh, discussed uh, this one uh, as I said the first one visual optical in the last lecture and as I said if you want to see and inspect what lies beneath then you need to uh, use one of these NDT methods uh, which are listed here. Some of these uh, will come under the category of uh, surface NDT method and some of these will fall under, under the category of bulk or volume NDT methods. Techniques like uh, liquid penetrant inspection, uh, magnetic particle inspection and eddy current testing, uh, they will come under the surface method. And methods like uh, ultrasonic testing and radiographic testing, they will fall under the bulk category. And there are certain techniques uh, like for example, ultrasonic uh, which can do both. I mean it can do both uh, surface NDT as well as bulk NDT. So, what we are going to do in this uh, series of lectures is to take uh, each of these uh, techniques, each of these NDT methods one at a time and then first learn about the uh, basic principle uh, behind the technique as I would have said before also and then go on to learn about the method itself as to how the uh, method is done, how the process is applied and what are the process parameters and so on. Okay. So, we will pick one by one and then we will uh, discuss in more details. So, in the today's uh, lecture, uh, we are going to uh, pick up the first topic in this list uh, which is on uh, liquid penetrant testing. Okay. So, this will be our uh, uh, first lecture as far as uh, the NDT methods are concerned. So, this will be on uh, liquid penetrant testing or uh, sometime people also call it as a dye penetrant testing because a liquid dye is used. And in short, uh, sometimes they also uh, prefer to call it as uh, simply PT, which uh, stands for penetrant testing. There is one more name to it, uh, which is uh, liquid uh, or liquid penetrant inspection or LPI in short. Okay. So, these are uh, the names of the same technique uh, which is the uh, liquid penetrant testing or penetrant testing. Okay. So, as I said, uh, we will first uh, learn about uh, the basic principle behind this, we will see on what scientific principle this particular technique is based on and then once we learn that, we will go on to see the method and then see what are the process parameters, how it is done and so on. So, as I said, uh, all you have here, uh, you have a liquid and you need to inspect a component. So, you have a solid surface. Okay. So, you apply this liquid on the solid surface and then allow it uh, to spread over it and then if you have defects or flaws, you can inspect it uh, depending on what this liquid does or how this uh, liquid interacts with the solid surface. So, that means, you need to uh, talk about uh, solid liquid interaction. That means, uh, let us say, uh, if I have a solid surface, okay, and then I put a liquid over this
Okay. Now, depending on uh, the interaction or the surface energies, uh, two things can happen. One is the liquid will spread over the solid surface. or in other words the liquid will wet the solid surface. Okay. And the second possibility will be the liquid will not spread. or it will not wet. So, there will be no wetting. Okay. So, two cases one is uh, wetting and the second is no wetting. Okay. So, whether the liquid will wet the solid surface or not uh, that would depend on a parameter which is known as a contact angle. Let us call this as theta. Okay. So, let us say this is my uh, solid surface and over this I have a liquid droplet like this. Okay. So, uh, as I said whether wetting will happen or not uh, this will depend on the surface energies uh, and which will finally, come back to this contact angle. So, this is the uh, surface energy between the liquid and the vapor. So, uh, if we call the surface energy as gamma, so this will be gamma liquid vapor. Okay. So, this is the surface tension of the liquid. Then you have uh, this particular interface over here. Okay. So, this is your solid liquid interface. So, here you have gamma S L which stands for solid liquid and then over here you have one more interface, one more surface and one more surface energy which is the interface between the solid and the vapor. So, you here you have gamma solid paper okay and this is the angle that i talked about which is known as the contact angle okay now if you take the balance of forces what do you have here you have uh, this gamma sb is being balanced by gamma sl plus gamma lb cos theta okay so, this is uh, the well known Young's equation or Young Dupre equation, which uh, talks about contact angle uh, between a solid surface and the liquid. And depending on this, so you can derive the contact angle uh, from this equation as. Okay. Now, depending on uh, whether theta is uh, less than 90 degree or theta is more than 90 degree, the liquid will either spread or not spread. So, if theta is less than 90 degree, then the liquid will wet the solid surface. Okay. And if uh, theta is more than 90 degree, then the liquid will not spread or 
will not wet the solid surface. Okay. So, this is the parameter uh, contact angle theta which decides whether a liquid will spread over a solid surface or whether it will not. Okay. Now, how does this uh, connect to liquid penetrant testing? Let us go ahead and see that. So, as I said you use a liquid dye which is generally a colored dye most of the time a red color is used and you take this liquid dye and then you spread it uh, you apply it on the solid surface. So, for this dye uh, to be spread over the solid surface of the component that you are examining this contact angle theta between the component being the surface of the component being examined and this liquid dye should be less than 90 degree. Okay. And for that to happen the surface should be clean. So, that is why the first step in this particular method is surface cleaning. So, you need to clean the surface of all the contaminants and remove them. So, these contaminants could be anything like uh, grease, oil or scale which might have formed on the surface. Okay. So, all this will tend to increase the contact angle. So, first you need to clean all this so that you can have a clean surface and the contact angle will be less than 90 degrees. So, this will ensure that the liquid dye that you are applying on the surface will spread over the solid surface. Okay. So, now once that happens, once the liquid spreads uh, over the surface, now depending on whether you have a solid surface with defect or without defect, this liquid first of all as I said will spread over the surface. Okay. Now, let us say uh, you have uh, some kind of discontinuity let us say crack or some other discontinuity over here. Okay on the surface. So, this crack uh, has a crack surface. So, here you have a surface on both the sides of the crack you have a surface. So, that means you have a surface energy involved over there. Okay. So, because of that uh, this liquid will be drawn inside this. Okay. So, the force uh, which draws a liquid inside an opening or any fissure on a solid surface is known as the capillary force which develops due to the surface tension of the liquid. Okay. So, that means if you uh, spread a liquid on a solid surface and if that surface has some kind of opening uh, some kind of small opening or fissure then a capillary force will develop because of uh, the surface tension of the liquid and that capillary force will draw the liquid inside that discontinuity or that opening. Okay. So, the capillary force uh, due to surface tension uh, gamma L b if you want to see it for a crack. So, let us say this is a solid surface and I have an opening a discontinuity let us say this is a crack okay. and we will give a size to this crack. So, let us say the crack size is r. So, crack radius is r. So, this diameter is 2 r. Okay. So, a crack of size r or radius r this capillary force uh, due to the surface tension would be 
2 pi r gamma lv wherein gamma lv is the surface tension of the liquid okay now uh, you can apply the liquid either through top like this okay and if the liquid is spread if the solid surface is wetted by the liquid then due to this opening and the capillary force which develops this liquid will go inside the crack okay in this fashion and this will be the contact angle okay so this is uh, the capillary which is drawing the liquid inside in certain cases uh, the dye is also applied from bottom that means you take the component and immerse it in a tank uh, which contains the dye okay so this is uh, your solid surface and then you are immersing it uh, into a tank uh, which contains the dye so in this case uh, the liquid will penetrate from bottom okay so it will go up but again this is the same capillary force uh, which is driving this liquid inside the crack so there again you have this contact angle theta so this is the capillary 2 pi r uh, gamma lv okay so what you have uh, inside this uh, crack is a liquid head so that means uh, the weight of the liquid is being supported by this capillary force so if you take uh, the component of the capillary force along this axis vertically then this is the component which is supporting the liquid head or the weight of the liquid okay so the weight of the liquid is given the crack size as r or the radius of the crack as r and let's say this height or this depth is h so this is the volume then the density multiplied by the gravity g okay so r is the crack size rho is the density of the dye or density of the liquid and g is acceleration due to gravity or gravity okay and h is the depth of penetration so from here you would be able to derive that up to what depth the liquid can penetrate, penetrate uh, depending on the size of the crack and the density of the dye okay so if you see from here this will be your h so h is equal to
Okay. So, as you could see it primarily depends on the properties of the liquid dye that is the surface tension of the liquid gamma LV and the density of the liquid. And apart from that it also depends uh, inversely uh, with the crack size. So, if you have a larger crack the penetration depth will be lower and vice versa. Okay. So, this uh, gives you an idea that for a particular crack size and for a particular dye what could be the depth up to which you can go and inspect. Okay. So, this is the basis for uh, this particular method of uh, dye penetrant testing. Okay. So, the basis for this is the capillary force which develops due to the surface tension. Okay. Now, the question is uh, how to use this to make visible indications of the crack uh, that you might have on a component that you are examining. Okay. So, now uh, as we have seen, so let us uh, magnify a bit. So, you have applied this dye as I said it is generally red in color and it has gone inside, inside the crack. Okay and it is all over the place because what you do in this case you have a spray can which contains the dye and you spray it over the surface. Okay. So, the whole surface will be covered by uh, this dye red colored dye and if there is any uh, discontinuity any flaw or defect this dye will be sucked inside by the capillary force. Okay. So, if you see the method as such Now, that we have understood the basic principle, we can go to the method and see uh, how exactly it is done. So, the first step uh, as I told uh, is surface cleaning or surface preparation. This is to ensure that your surface is clean and the contact angle is less than 90 degrees, so that the liquid dye can spread over nicely over the, over the surface. Second, you apply the dye ok. So, this is what uh, is being shown uh, in the diagram. So, you uh, take this uh, dye and it uh, goes inside. Okay. So, in this case as I have mentioned before also you could either apply it uh, through spray. So, you can have a small spray can and you can spray it or uh, it is also possible to apply by immersing it. Uh, in a tank which contains the dye. Okay. So, either way depending on uh, the size of the part or the convenience of the examiner uh, both the method can be used. Okay. Now, the next thing is uh, you need to allow some dwell time because uh, this, this liquid dye will have a certain viscosity although it does not come into that equation which we just now talked about, but this viscosity because due to the viscosity it will take some time for the liquid to go inside the crack if there are discontinuities and crack on the surface. So, you need to allow certain time so that uh, the liquid dye can go inside the uh, flaws and defects and uh, this dwell time as to how much time you should allow that depends on you know what kind of part you have, what is the uh, size of that part and what kind of defects and what kind of size you are expecting in the what kind of defect size you are expecting in the part. Okay. 
So, this uh, dwell time will ensure that uh, you have enough time for the liquid to go inside the flask. Okay. Now, uh, as I said, uh, this uh, liquid will be now uh, spread over the solid surface. So, the whole surface, uh, the liquid will be all over the surface. Okay. But before that, uh, let us see uh, what kind of uh, penetrants are used and what properties this uh, penetrant should have. Okay. So, the first uh, characteristics or property of this liquid is that it should be uh, chemically stable. Okay, chemical stability and it should also have uniform physical consistency. That means, it should not have one density in one part and some other density in the other parts. Okay. Then it should have a flash point which should not be lower than 95 degree Celsius. So, it is close to 100 degree that means, it, it should not be a flammable liquid, you should be able to handle it properly without the hazards of uh, you know fire and all that. And it should provide a high degree of weightability. So, as I told before uh, this weightability is the first requirement uh, for this dye penetrant testing. So, you should have a liquid which will provide a higher degree of weightability provided your surface is clean. And it should also have low viscosity, so that you do not really have to allow a very long dwell time. So, this will permit better coverage. and also save some time as I told in terms of the dwell time and it will also provide you a minimum drag out. Then it should also be able to uh, penetrate the discontinuity. quickly and completely. Then it should have uh, sufficient brightness, uh, so that uh, you get that contrast uh, for the visual inspection at the end of the process, you have to inspect it. So, you should have uh, sufficient brightness, brightness so that you can get that uh, contrast uh, for the inspection and permeance of color. Next, uh, it should be uh, chemically inert it should not uh, react with the surface that you are examining. It 
it should also it should not be toxic it uh, should not evaporate uh, quickly so it should have uh, slow drying property then it should be easy to remove and it should not have any offensive smell. So, it should be as far as possible odorless. And uh, for the sake of uh, economics, it should be low cost. And so, these are the primary requirements for uh, a liquid to be used as a penetrant in this method. Okay. So, I think uh, in this class, I uh, will stop here today okay. and in the next class, we will see the other steps of this method and then finally, we will see how the defects and uh, discontinuities are made visible and you get visible indications by this particular process. Okay. So, I will stop here today. Thank you for your attention.